If it's not going to zero, it's going to a million. It's million either nothing, right? If it's nothing, coin, then it's, it's getting scrubbed down. And, and, and of course. So hello guys, my name is Michael Trader and today I decided to make a cool video for you. I'm going to explain to you what Bitcoin is, the history of this asset, so how it is all started, what Bitcoin represents today and how people can use it. Bitcoin with us has been more than 14 years already and for now still many people think that this is just a scam or an easy way to earn money or just a simple toy, however all these ways are incorrect. And now I'm going to tell you what it really is and how I can use it. Today I'm going to explain you what Bitcoin really is, uh, how you can use it and why I can see it to be the uh, technology of the future. I will try to explain all this information in the most easiest way so that even your granny can understand this. So let's start! <music> So, in order to understand the essence of Bitcoin, it would be better to get back to 2008. In this year, in the United States, there was a really construction boom. Developers were engaged in this construction boom. We had a lot of mortgage bonds, different kinds of estate loans and etc. Each one try to buy as much as possible uh, of estate equity and etc. And all this led to this boom, which turned to be a real crisis after this. My friends, it seems to be quite difficult, so let's mark a robbie, let us have a small rest in the bed. Basically, Louis Rainieri's mortgage bonds were amazingly profitable for the big banks. They made billions and billions on their 2% fee they got for selling each of these bonds. But then they started running out of mortgages to put in them. After all, there are only so many homes and so many people with good enough jobs to buy them, right? So the banks started filling these bonds with riskier and riskier mortgages. Thank you, Andrew. That way, they can keep that profit machine churning, right? By the way, these risky mortgages are called subprime. So whenever you hear subprime, think shit. Our friend Michael Burry found out that these mortgage bonds that were supposedly 65% AAA were actually just mostly full of shit. So now he's going to short the bonds, which means to bet against. Now fuck off. So yes, guys, Mark Robbie, not seems to be the best explanator of this material. Actually, banks started to give loans to risky people who are not capable of giving back this money. And you understand that this can lead to the financial crisis after this. Okay, so what can be wrong after this? Well, as I told you previously, most of these people are not capable of giving back this money after and this leads to the crisis of course banks can take back these houses apartments flats and etc and sell to anyone else but none of people has enough money to pay for these estate assets because they already have loans and this is a big problem after this banks start to understand that they have a big gap in their assets and they cannot fulfill it and here we go many banks start to be bankrupt because they cannot fulfill their obligations towards their investors even such big banks such as Lehman Brothers turns out to be bankrupt in 2008. Lehman Brothers was one of the biggest world banks and when it turned out to be bankrupt, this period, this date, we can consider to be the beginning of the world financial crisis. After this, this pandemia erupted the whole world. After this, world governments start to give loans for the banks, not for the investors and random citizens, but to the banks in order to save them and let them restructurize their loans. In that moment, one cool guy whose name is Satoshi Nakamoto created his book, which is called The White Book of Bitcoin, and he explains 
how cryptocurrency works. So what Bitcoin is and how it works. Let's stop talking about history and let's explain the situation with Bitcoin. What Bitcoin is? In order to answer this question, we need to understand what money is, dollars, euros, Indian rupees, and etc. Each currency is a measure of things. You work in order to get money, spend it on what you want, food, rest, I don't know, travels, etc. But how you can count how much houses you need to build in order to receive two weeks all-inclusive trip, or I don't know, to Cuba, for example. That's why we need money in order to convert our work into money. So money themselves doesn't signify anything. This is a kind of public agreement when this money are backed with real asset like gold, fuel, gas, etc. However, now most of banks and governments try to get rid of banking money by real assets. So Bitcoin is a normal currency just as dollar, but it doesn't have material body, it's only virtual and this is his big bonus. Guys, now we understood what Bitcoin is, but we have a new question. Why do we need the new currency if we already have a lot of them. For what we need Bitcoin. So we have user 1 and user 2 and they need to make a money transaction to pay for their work uh, with just like a simple present and how can they do this. For that purpose they need third member which will be bank who will control this transaction so that everything will be honest and of course bank will take a quite high commission for its services. Satoshi's idea was to be get rid of the bank in this chain to make this transaction just between user 1 and user 2 and only program codes will control this operation, this transaction to be honest and clear. But all this was done not for a small commission but for the ideological idea, Satoshi was anarchist and he was lured by ideas of the communists and etc. He created Bitcoin to get rid of the World Bank system, which was, according to him, erupted and discreditized itself many times. Fast and cheap transactions all over the world, none of the financial regulators can block your assets, they belong only to you. You don't have an effect of inflation on your assets. All this is Bitcoin. So how it can be done? All this is rooted in the work of blockchain and I will explain it to you. How Bitcoin works. For that purpose I need to explain you what blockchain is. To explain this in simple words. For example, I decided to buy a book it for my mom and today at from 12 p.m. to 1 a.m. we have several kinds of transactions and together with this transaction we have mine where I transfer money for this bucket. At 1 a.m. the formation of this block is ended and in this block contains information of whole transactions for what we transferred money, how many bitcoins we have on different wallets together with my transaction for the bucket. After this, in the next hour from 1 am to 2 am, we have the formation of the next block with new transactions and new amounts of money of bitcoins on different wallets. But together with new information in the new block, we still have information about previous transactions in the previous hour in the previous block. And then each hour, hour to hour, block to block, we have the full storage of the information from the previous blocks, from the previous hours and new blocks and new hours. In essence, this is a big bureaucratical book in which contains the whole information about transactions which was made even in 2009. And all this 
chain of blocks is called blockchain. If you followed me well, then you have a question. Who controls this blockchain and from where we get all the power for these transactions? For that purpose, we have miners. As you remember, you can mine Bitcoin with help of different means, your computer, video cards, supercomputers such as Essex and etc. The process of mining is very easy. You turn on your computer, it consumes electric energy and it makes difficult calculations which create blockchain. For that action, miners receive a word such as Bitcoin. So well, the word of Bitcoin is made, is organized, is supported by miners. Each of you can mine Bitcoin all over the world, but who controls this action? And here we return to my phrase that Satoshi was lured by anarchists. All decisions concerning the future of Bitcoin are made by society, not by the group of elites, but by the group of interests, which are miners, users of Bitcoin. Only you and your comrades can decide about the future of this asset. Yes, of course, uh, in Bitcoins here, there is different groups of interest which have meetings, closed meetings. They discuss the future of cryptocurrency, but all in all, they can only offer the possible future for that asset. However, final decision will be made by society. But who is Satoshi Nakamoto and why did we decide that he wanted to destroy current financial system? Satoshi Nakamoto is anonymous. Still, we don't have an exact answer whether this was a real man or just a group of people which created blockchain. We have different theories in the internet and in the society. As for me, it doesn't matter whether this is just a random guy or a group of people who decided to destroy the current financial system. The most important is that this guy was a crypto enthusiast who offered something new and changed our life. But why is he anarchist? Everything is simple. Satoshi decided to let us get rid of the bank system, to get rid of this third part in our transactions and let us communicate and transfer money between two people, me and you, without any commissions and etc. This is a new step for our financial future. Do remember that I told you that each block contains a huge massive of data. In the very first block, which was created in 2009, Satoshi left the Easter egg, and in this Easter egg, we can find phrase cancel on brink of second bailout for banks. This was made during, yes, of course, financial world crisis. This was the start for Satoshi to create his blockchain. And finally, get rid of the World Bank system and such mistakes that can be made by it. Well, we have Gini, we have working procedure, ideology, and it works. But why does it work? How Bitcoin turns out to be the most, I uh, know, the most expensive currency in the world, which cost at the beginning just several few cents. And now one Bitcoin costs more than 70,000 bucks. By which means Bitcoin turns out to be more useful than other currencies. Bitcoin has a lot of pluses and it's often compared to gold. Let's get into the depth of this question. From the ancient time, gold was the most popular asset and it was used by different governments. Their currencies were backed by the gold. Gold cannot be affected by inflation 
because we don't have unlimited amount of gold. Amount of gold is always limited and we need to work to mine gold in order to get it. Moreover, gold allows us to pay for any goods in any country of the world. All this can be said in the benefits of Bitcoin. From the very beginning, it was limited by the amount of 21 million tokens. If we want to mine Bitcoin, we need to pay for his electricity. That's why these assets cannot be affected by the inflation also, and it can be considered to be the new gold. And moreover, such as gold, Bitcoin can be used to pay for anything all over the world even now. If you look through the internet, you can buy many goods with payment method of Bitcoin. Moreover, Bitcoin cannot be blocked or taken by any government, company or financial regulator because it is decentralized. You can always be sure that your money are safe. Moreover, Bitcoin is a product of modern technologies and you shouldn't pay high commission for it. You create commission that you want to pay yourself. Bitcoin is fully anonymous. There is no names and surnames. You just have your personalized number of your wallet and the amount of Bitcoins on it. So none of the regulators can say that this wallet and these transactions was made by you or belongs to you. And together with this, it's impossible to hack blockchain because of the special code and because of the fact that each block contains information from the previous block. It sounds to be difficult, but just imagine there is about 21 million Bitcoins in the world and if someone could hack blockchain then it will be rich man for the whole his life but during these 15 years it wasn't done yet moreover bitcoin is highly transportable uh, i think it will be quite hard for you to take the case with 1 million bucks or the same amount of gold like 1 million bucks and transport it from one country to another however bitcoin allows you to do this however bitcoin is just a virtual currency and you can hold all these bitcoins in your brain you should just create your wallet which will be signed which will be added to the blockchain after this you should create your password which will be only in your head and that means that all your money are held also in your brain and none of people can get access to them except of you however we will not be honest with you if you if i tell you only about pluses of bitcoin but it also has some minuses and now i would like to explain them to you so the first problem with its code related to the fact that if you remember at the very beginning I was telling you about different kinds of Bitcoin communities and several months ago we had one of such meetings where members of that community were discussing a very interesting question concerning multiplying of the amount of bitcoins towards 42 million if you remember now we have just 21 million of bitcoins and if we enlarge this amount towards 42 million then inflation will seriously affect the price of bitcoin of course this offer was rejected but the fact that it can be done is really serious because then we can understand that such possibility is in the code of the bitcoin and bitcoin has several functions about which we didn't know moreover satoshi's twitter which was inactive for the past five years now made one more interesting post and in it satoshi told us that he would like to renew his book, his white book of Bitcoin and adapt it for the current future, for the new time. So soon 
we will see what new Satoshi would like to tell us in this book. One more problem related to Bitcoin is the dark side of the Satoshi. Imagine such situation, for example, 2100 year Bitcoin started to be the world currency. All banks, all financial system, all people use Bitcoin for money transactions in order to pay for any kind of goods and etc. And Bitcoin uh, started to be the basis of the world's financial system. Its price is now more than 500,000 bucks. And one simple plugin which was created in 2009 by Satoshi, very simple code, just small plugin, started to be active. And if you know, Satoshi still has more than 1 million bitcoins on his wallet. And in 2100, this plugin started to sell all these 1 million bitcoins with minimal price. This will lead to the momental drop of the price of the Bitcoin and this will destroy the whole economy in this future. Our financial system will be destroyed. All people will lose everything in one moment. For what Satoshi might create this plugin? We have three options. The first one, Satoshi was bold in school, in university when he was youngster and now he wants to make revenge against the whole world and financial system. The second variant is that Satoshi is traditionalist like Una Bomber and he wants our whole society to get back to the rural life, get rid of the mega policies and goods of the current civilization. And the first variant is maybe I'm mistaken, maybe I'm just telling you a joke and you shouldn't listen to me, maybe this is just a product of my imagination. All these can be true, but remember, I warned you about such a possibility. By the way, please leave comments, press like button and subscribe to my private TG and YouTube channel because you understand that I spend a lot of time for this video and if you want to receive more information from me with the same kind of cool videos then I want to see your reactions my dear friends press like button leave comments subscribe and be with me and one more dark side of Bitcoin is humanity if you remember I told you at the very beginning that you did not understand the essence of Bitcoin because the essence of Bitcoin is to change our our financial reality, destroy our current financial system and create something new to get rid of the current bank system and make transactions clear and honest between me and you so that we can get rid of the bank in this chain, uh, to get rid of the high commissions, to make our transactions safe and etc etc etc. However, now Bitcoin is used by miners, traders and etc. just to receive profits and income and convert this income into normal currencies such as dollars, euros, Indian rupees etc. and spend them in the current bank system. So people don't want to change the current financial system, they just want to stay in it and just receive profit and income from the trading of Bitcoin and mining of it. That's not the essence of Bitcoin. We destroy the ideology of this cryptocurrency by that means. I hope that in the near future people will finally understand the essence of this cryptocurrency and get rid of the current bank system and will create the new wonderful future and wonderful economy. So the final question is what's the future of Bitcoin? Honestly, Honestly, for now, as I told you, many people just receive profits and income from Bitcoin by trading and mining it, not getting into the depth of its essence. Still, many countries uh, start to adopt, use Bitcoin like an official payment method, even companies. But all in all, none of these countries are world's economical gigamonts such as United States or, I don't know, China. Because such gigamons like these countries will never adopt something that they cannot control. 
That's why maybe in the near future, such countries like USA and China or any other economic Digimon can ban Bitcoin. However, it will be always used by unofficial sphere of businesses such as drug or weapon selling or dark web because these people, these businesses will always use Bitcoin like a payment method because it cannot be controlled and help them to stay anonymous. Of course, you may not like this fact, but it's true, it's our life and we cannot get rid of it. All in all, you can now have a question, what should I do, buy, mine or sell Bitcoin? And I will answer you that answer is in your head. You should analyze the current situation, look through the news and understand what will be in future and you will find the best answer, I promise you. Thank you for being with me. I hope you really were pleased by this video. And if you want to see more, subscribe, press the like button, leave comments, and Michael Trader will help you to understand more in the sphere of financial instruments.